As the plane climbs to 24,000 feet, the air outside gets thinner and thinner. But the air inside the cabin is pressurized for the passenger's comfort. The difference in air pressure between the cabin on one side of the bulkhead and the unpressurized tail on the other stretches the bulkhead and its faulty repair to the breaking point. In a test which duplicated these conditions, cracks begin to appear and lengthen around the rivet holes. Until the bulkhead snaps. In an instant, pressurized air from the cabin blows a 30 square foot hole, bringing down the ceiling around the rear toilets. The highly pressurized air blasts its way into the tail fin of the aircraft and simply breaks it off. From that moment on, the plane is doomed. The pilots don't know that most of the tail of their aircraft is missing, blown off into the sea below, along with the crucial hydraulic lines that allow them to control the plane. It all finally makes sense. Without the stabilizing influence of the tail and with the loss of ability to control the rudder and flaps, the pilots cannot control the plane. The giant aircraft now oscillates in a terrifying motion called the Fugoid cycle. Don't lower the nose! As the nose drops into a shallow dive, the plane gathers speed, which generates lift. The nose rises again, and the plane begins to climb until it loses speed, tips over, and begins to fall again. The whole cycle repeats itself over and over again. Flight 123 is now plunging up and down in terrifying dives, sometimes several hundred feet at a time. It really could be considered a miracle that the pilots were able to keep the airplane flying for 30 minutes or more after having lost all the hydraulics and their flight controls. But it kept circling and eventually worked its way into the mountains, and it became impossible for them to uh, to land. There was no real alternative for them at all, uh, except to fly as long as they could and hope for some miracle, which never occurred. Lower the nose. Lower the nose. Yes. Both hands. How about gear down? Gear down. So put the gear down. To understand what the pilots were up against, four hand-picked flight crews were placed in a simulator and confronted with the same situation. Not one of them could land the plane. The pilots of Flight 123 managed to keep their plane in the air for 30 minutes, much of it among high mountains. An amazing feat of flying. Back in Tokyo, as the cause of the JAL accident was identified, Ron Schleed had to break the news to his colleague from Boeing, one of the top designers of the 747. The simple truth was that a single row of rivets had been used for the repair when a double row was required. And when we uh, described our findings to him, you can imagine this Boeing man became very, very upset, uh, uh, personally uh, was crying because of the fact that his airplane that he designed and then the people that did the repair because it was Boeing people that designed and did the repair, had made an improper repair that caused the airplane to crash. Boeing's reputation was damaged, but if they could derive any comfort at all from this tragedy, it was that there was no inherent fault in the 747. The plane went on to become one of the most successful civil aircraft of all time. <laughs> 